then we jump over to uh, the lungs. And on the lungs, make sure I got everything that I wanted there. And to skin, appropriate placement, moisture, texture, negative lesions, good size, appropriate size of the thorax in relation to the rest of the body. Shape was uh, appropriate, symmetrical. Uh, was symmetrical, really shrugged shoulders and retractions and negative. I uh, did the inspection, I did the palpation, palpable respiratory surgeons, I did the front, uh, deep and symmetrical, good, and great rhythm depth of these associates. Yeah, the rate was uh, uh, consistent with vital signs. I didn't do a recount, but you know, I'm asking her to breathe deeply and they were very consistent. Rhythm was regular, depth was deep, effort <gasps> non labored, use of accessories negative, and any adventitious breath sounds negative, color. Uh, appropriate flesh tone, uh, that's a lateral appropriate flesh tone, negative lesions on both sides. The uh, rate uh, on the, and I didn't have to do the long sounds on the laterals, did not have to do those. And then on the posterior, yes, color, uh, rate, rhythm, depth, effort, use of accessories. And I said it was consistent on the back with what I got on the front as far as the, um, the spine. Uh, oh, I did find a little bit of deviation on there, and that's when I would verify then or back then whether the person has a history of scoliosis, and I think it was Julia said, yes, there's a little bit of scoliosis there. So her, she was asymmetrical in her bony prominences, especially those scapulae, the right side drooped droop down a little bit left, uh, uh, more than, the, uh, or over the left side. So I saw some asymmetry there. And so my finding for this exam looks like it's just uh, scoliosis. Respiratory excursion was deep and symmetrical. AP on half transverse diameter. That was good. That was appropriate. Cardiac, the um, uh, intercostal spaces. I didn't pick up any uh, thrills any place else or any pulsations any place else. Uh, pulsations, but the PMI where I only found pulsations but negative for thrills. Uh, so that was all good. L uh, heart sounds, the, uh, they were appropriate relationship. S1, S2. Great consistent with vital signs. Rhythm was regular. Strength was strong. And extra heart sounds were negative. There were no high pitched or low pitched uh, sounds. And so therefore I don't have to talk about the murmur. I will talk about murmur in theory, but there's nothing there. And then the silhouette the cardiac silhouette was appropriate. It was appropriate. I went from pulmonary resonance to cardiac dullness to pulmonary resonance. So I did not see an enlarged heart or cardiomegaly there. That concludes my exam. And thank you very much, for all your volunteers, for working with me today. And uh, I will report uh, on to your provider the, uh, the fact that you, I picked up on a little bit of scoliosis. Any questions? Um, do we, we have to do the lateral for thorax? Listen to the laterals? Yeah. You do not. That's an optional, and I, I think for time's sake, I would not listen to the laterals. Okay, and then we, don't, we do not have to do the general general status and the general status. Right. We only have to do that. That's right. Yeah. And the uh, I taught you the quick and dirty on that, but I've got a whole lot more that I want to teach you about proverbs and judgment and, and all of that stuff. And I, that's going to come with the head and neck exam. So the, one of the first things that we're going to pick up in the first couple of weeks after the midterm exam is starting at the top and working our way down. So that'll all be put into place once. And yeah, that'll be all put into place for the final exam. All right, yeah. So for our patients who come back, does it have to be me anyone. Okay. I would practice with them first so that they understand, you know, where you're putting that stethoscope. Does that make sense? So if it's a further, for, students have made the mistake, guys, let me, let me speak seriously to you right now. Students have made the mistake of not really vetting their um, surrogate patient, and this person had hit a history of physical abuse, and now the student is putting that stethoscope under there and doing this and doing this and doing this. And when it got down around here, the student kind of freaked out because they didn't know that that's what you were going to do. So you want to vet your, when I say vet, you know what I mean? You want to make sure you check out your patient, making sure this is what I'm going to do and do a couple practices on them to make sure that they're okay. All right. I, I can't tell you that person that has the, uh, what do you, personal space issues. They, they will freak out when it comes to this exam. So you want to check it out in advance. Don't find out in the room, you know, oh boy, you know, I got this situation going, okay? Yeah? Um, so if our patient is a female, and they just to get on the mental them open Oh, it's perfect, yeah, but the reason, yes, yes. And the reason why I tell you about the, the five t-shirts is so that you understand that whatever modesty that patient is looking for, that's fine with me, but I also think it's perfectly modest to have a gown on 
and work through there because we don't we don't handle our patients in an let me say professionally we don't handle our patients in an immodest manner do you follow me so a gown is a, a evidence of modesty do you follow me so if the patient feels comfortable and it lets you get at the sides and lets you have access to the back and all that stuff if your patient is fine with that I'm certainly fine with that and we ask we brought up the guys so if, if you if you want to drop the, the gown down completely with the guys then if, if the uh, surrogate patient's fine with that you know everybody when I was going through nursing school everybody wanted to uh, work with me because you know they, they knew that I didn't care so you know it was they had really easy access to me okay does that make sense so yes if you're working with a female patient she's okay with that gown but again make sure you practice so she knows what you're expecting okay what else Good, good, good. With the back, <coughs> you'll just say no deviation if they're as if it's normal. On the back, mm. uh, well, appropriate uh, right. structures. So symmetrical. The parameters here. Just follow your parameters, and they actually say. Let me get it for you. Shape, appropriate shape with the rest of the body structures. So you're not looking for a huge barrel chest, you know, that's appropriate shape with the rest of the body structure. Symmetry, symmetrical, symmetry of the bony provinces, and appropriate S curvature. So that's the actual uh, parameters and your descriptors that you put with that. Okay, okay. thank you. Right. Yeah, well, guys, another tip. If you follow, Alvaro, uh, thanks. If you follow these parameters and descriptors, I'm not saying you gotta be a carbon copy of me, but if you follow those, how can I complain with what I showed you? Following? So, and again, I think I asked you guys this question, to take away some of the fear of this thing, is that the vast majority of you guys are gonna get a what on this thing? An A, not a hundred. <laughs> Very rare, very rarely do you get a hundred, right? So nerves take over and you're trying to, you're trying to do this, you're trying to do that, you're trying to be all things, all people. You know, that's what I was just doing. So nerves take over and, and you know, things get in the way. But so I'm not looking for, I am not looking for a hundred percent. All right, I'm not looking for you guys to be perfect. I'm not perfect. But what I am looking for is a competent exam that you know what you're doing, the technique is fairly good, and um, you're communicating well to your patients. So you're confident, good communication. Did you see me trying to put my patients at ease? Did you see me coming out of myself for some self-donation? Right? That's why I think nurses make uh, very, very good people because they do something every day that they don't want to do and it makes them a better person. You know what that thing it is? You know what the thing, first thing that you do that you don't want to do? Be cheerful, be all things to all people. It's not necessarily something you want to do. You might want to be crabby that day, but you can't afford yourself the luxury of having a bad day when you're a nurse. You've got to perform, and that's something that you don't want to do, and that makes you a better person. My dad used to say, this was his one-liner, my dad used to say, if you do one thing every day that you don't want to do, you'll be a better person, and I, I found that to be so in nursing. Question? Um, during our return demonstration, do you want to wear a lab coat, or what does it matter? Yeah, I think a lab coat's pretty good. Yeah, so regular street coat. Clothes and your lab coat would be good. It's a good question. I forgot to tell you about that. Okay. What else? Um, oh, and what that signifies to the patient, by the way, your surrogate patients might get the giggles. And so <laughs> if you've got your lab jacket on with your little name badge and your stethoscope, that's kind of telling your surrogate patient, hey, don't mess me up. I'm, I'm actually in an exam right now. You know, I'm being tested on this, so don't don't get the giggles, and then you both start giggling. You know how it goes. You both, you both start giggling, and now you can't straighten up because they're your roommate, and they know you a certain way. Brothers and sisters are really horrendous for this. So you get your brother up here, and he starts going, you know, mess, making faces at you, and then you both start laughing, and then I say, hey, 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 this is supposed to be a professional examination. Yes. Question. So there's a lot of great and rhythm and depth throughout. Mm -hmm. We only really have to do that once, and then we can just keep saying consistent. System. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, absolutely. Good observation. That's true. Can you want up here. to use your walking blood pressure cuff or something like that? Bring your own. You'll be more familiar with it. Okay. I have my own, and this valve is starting to go bad. Yeah. The uh, uh, now I didn't do the. Um, I was trying to get everything set up and change. I got distracted. I didn't do the tighten, loosen, tighten, loosen, tighten, loosen. But the last person who worked with this thing cranked that rascal down, and I'm pretty strong. You know, I can I can take the applesauce lid off. You follow me? I, I, I can get that. Everybody comes to me for the applesauce. I'm work. I couldn't get that thing undone. So I don't know how someone does that. Maybe. 
so tight loose, tight loose, and you're more familiar with your step, uh, your blood pressure cuff if you use your own. You're welcome to this. If you if you want to practice with this one and you want to use that, that's fine with me, but I would I would use my own equipment. Okay. Yeah. If you're recording throughout it, what at the end of it, is there anything you need to like Yeah, you can go, you can just bust through and you can say, hey, I'm just gonna make sure I got everything I wanted to, right? Okay. So this is like staying the whole 45 minutes for the quiz. Do you follow me? No, no cut, no foul. Stay the whole 45 minutes for the quiz. Make sure you got everything right, and you know that's that guarantees. You know, there's no doubt you're going to overlook something. Very rarely, very, let me say this: very rarely does someone get 100% on this thing, because nerves. You know, things kick in. You're trying to do this and think about this and all the rest of it, so things get dropped. But the one way to hone in on 100% is look down through there one more time. Take the time you've got. If you've got the time, take it. If you're at the end of your 30 minutes because you went, hey, here's what not to do. You know, so you're you're listening here. And uh, this patient is, um, you're doing her thing. Saying, How long do you need to hear love, dub, love, dub, love, dub, love, dub, love, dub, love, dub to determine its appropriate relationship, or that you don't have an extra high pitch or an extra low pitch sound? Do you follow me? So if you're hanging around like this, and now you're going over here, and now you're going over here, do you see that's a time waster? So, boom, 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 boom. boom, boom. Bum, 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 You get the idea. You're progressing through and you're really listening, you're really examining this patient. Okay, good. There was another hand. Did, did you get answered? I saw no, two I hands in there. Okay, yeah. Um, should we bring our black notebooks or that piece of paper, that actual, like... What am I going to say to this, guys? No. no, no, no. Because your evidence that you've been doing what you're supposed to in clinicals is that notebook. Okay. That's your evidence to me. Okay, if I don't see that, that's that's going to be probably, that's a moderate thing. That's going to be, ooh, it could be a major thing, depending on how crabby I am. Is that a two, <laughs> three, two, three point thing if you can't produce what you're supposed to be using all semester long so far? Okay, that's your verification. That's a verification to me that you actually have this little notebook thing going. All right. I lost my notebook a long time ago because now it's all up here. You know, when I do all these exams every single day in my practice, it's all up here. I don't, I don't use my notebook anymore. Yeah. So should we write as we go what we find, or just you can, or you can. Hey, I think it's easier just to report as you report go. As yeah, okay. and, and, at, and at the end, just tap off and just go. You know, you're just kind of going, yeah, okay, 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 okay. And you know, oh, wait, 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 I guess I didn't. And you can, t I didn't do respiratory surgery on the back, and it's deep and symmetrical. You know, so I would report as you go. Okay. Now that's going to be unnerving to you at first because. He's reporting as he goes too, but again, I'm hearing both of you guys. I, I can do that. Three is rough. Three, I just uh, th three is not my best. Two I, I, is my best because I don't fall asleep on you. If there's two doing this exam, okay. What else? You don't actually just write it down. Just like, you don't need to write it down. No, yeah, not 98.8 is what I got on my patient. I said it, and done with it. And I said, hey, that's good. Vital signs within normal limits. Okay. Uh, I don't think I, at the end, said vital signs within normal limits. I may have, I don't think I did. But what I did say is temperature, yeah, normal, respirations, normal, you know, in the normal limits, that kind of thing. With, with each one of those, I said, that's good, that's good, that's good. Good? So we're not getting any more like, papers at the end, nothing like that? Or... No, it is a demonstration. Doesn't that make you nervous? <laughs> it's a demonstration. Right. Okay. okay, good. Moving on. All right, let's take a 10-minute break, and I'll, and I'll see you guys back in 10 minutes.